I'm pretty sure we're not supposed to hear that noise, and I could be wrong, but I think these dials are supposed to be able to turn independently. But who knows, I've been wrong before. Hey folks, we're back again with another video, and today we are going to be working on a Fox Factory Series Float 34 Stepcast Fork with a Fit4 damper. So this fork came from a subscriber, and to say the least, it has some issues. For starters, the damper is making all sorts of crazy noises. To the knob, or at least the low-speed compression knob, where are you? Doesn't want to turn at all. The high speed compression turns, but ultimately the low speed compression doesn't turn. And three, well, this wiper on the air side, that looks like it's definitely seen better days. All right. So what we are going to be doing is a full service, full 50 hour, full air spring and complete damper service. And in this video, it's probably going to be a little bit long, guys, because I'm going to completely take apart that damper in order to find out why that knob doesn't work. There's not all that many things that would stop it from working but we will find out. Hopefully there's nothing mechanically wrong in there, all right? So with that being said, let's get into the tools and parts needed for the job. As for tools, we're gonna break it out into three sections. So I'm gonna start off with the 50 hour service tools, but no matter which section and what tools, the most important tool here, boom, safety glasses. Make sure you wear your safety glasses. So in order of use. The first thing we're going to do is write down our existing settings and we're going to use an air pump to grab our current PSI and then to slowly take out the air from the air spring side, all right? So then we're going to go at the bottom and take out the rebound knob. We need a two millimeter Allen to do that. Now this is a step cast 34. Both nuts at the bottom are, are 10 milliliter, uh, millimeters, so we're going to need a 10 millimeter socket, a long depth socket, narrow socket, very important over here, a thick socket won't fit on, I believe, the air side or the damper side. It's going to be pretty difficult, right? So we need a narrow or tapered socket on the outside here, and you're most likely, get, well, you're going to need an extension for sure because it's pretty deep in there, right? And you're going to need a ratchet. So then once we remove the screws, we want to tap out the shafts from the lower legs. Sometimes you don't need to do that. But this Fox tool, this is an aftermarket version of the Fox tool. Fox is like super expensive. This is like a third the price. We could use this with a mallet to tap out the shafts from the lower boots. So now we're going to separate the lower boots. We're going to grab our pick. We're going to take out our foam rings. And then to take out the wipers, I love this Ice Tools tire lever. Any tire lever tool that has a nice plastic coating on the outside will work great as opposed to let's say a wrench because it's much lower chances on chipping the paint on the boot, okay? So then we're gonna clean the lower boots. I have this ritual where I use a dowel, square towel, a paper towel and lint-free paper towel preferred and a rubber band, all right? And we will go over that later and a lot of alcohol. So then we're gonna put everything back together. We're gonna need, in my case, a 34 millimeter, well, in this case, a 34 millimeter wiper install tool okay and we're going to use a mallet to put it in might be able to do it by hand we could get lucky we are going to need a torque wrench and we're going to need oh yeah you're going to need an oil pan in order to empty out the alcohol make sure you have an oil pan because there's going to be some oil that should technically although as you guys seen in my videos some forks don't have any of them because people just abuse them and we're going to need alcohol and that's pretty much it let's next let's get into the air spring and the damper tools first let's start off with the air spring side right so we are going to need to remove the top cap for that we need a 26 millimeter chamferless preferred socket flat top socket no beveled edges right if you have beveled edges especially if they're deep bevels they're not going to work low bevels might work but flat even better then we need to remove the ring that's holding the whole air spring in right so any kind of flat blunt pick will work over here. So then we are going to separate the bottom nut, 12 millimeter wrench and a 12 millimeter crow's foot in order to torque it back down. We're gonna to wanna to change out the actual piston itself or one of the pistons on the inside. You could take the chance and do it on your own without a bullet tool, but a bullet tool, you get these aftermarket for much cheaper than what Fox sells them for, will guarantee that you are not gonna damage the quad ring on the inside of the actual piston itself, right? 
and some picks to take out some seals that are in there. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, you are going to need a soft jaw with a nine millimeter shaft hole, right? So definitely in order to be able to take out the air spring. Technically, you could probably do it without it, but that will definitely help. You're gonna need heat in order to remove that bottom nut and Loctite Red in order to be able to put it in there. Forgot to mention again, always safety glasses. So now for the damper side. For the damper side, first we're gonna need a two millimeter or 2.5 millimeter, sorry, to remove the top cap, the dial screw on top that's holding the dials in place. Then we're gonna need again, Champerless 26 millimeter socket in order to remove the entire damper cartridge right then we're going to put into a vise now we're going to need two different soft jaws here for the body i have a soft jaw over here that's made for the fit in fact it's made for all fox forks this is about 15 millimeter hole that you are going to need okay in order to clamp down the body of the damper in order to be able to separate it but before we separate it, this is gonna be the biggest pain in the butt. There is this little C-clip that's really hard to get. I'm gonna show you how to get it out, but ultimately you're gonna need one, if not two, very small thin tip picks to get it out. And I highly, highly recommend a magnet. You do not wanna lose that C-clip. You wanna take it out and get it on that magnet as quick as possible, all right? So then we're gonna separate the damper body in order to do that. We need a 19 millimeter wrench and then a 19 millimeter crow's foot to torque it all back down. Then we're going to want to separate the top half, the compression stack. This is optional, by the way. I'm going to mention it. This is separate, working on the compression stack on this fork in order to change out the bladder and change out one of the, only one internal seal that does nothing but just stop oil from going through with very little pressure against it personally is not worth it, but if you do want to do that in order to check to make sure that everything is working properly in there, this one, as I said, something's definitely wrong inside this fork, so I'm going to open up the entire compression stack, but to do that, 26 millimeter chamferless again, and a six millimeter long, it has to be very long Allen key, a T-type six millimeter long will work great for that, okay, so we open it all up, we're gonna separate the shims. Make sure you have a zip tie or a tie wrap to collect your shims. Remember the order that we put it in. Now, when we put it all back together, what might come in handy for the actual dial itself on the inside is a retaining ring plier in order to help us get in there and just put it in there, right? So then we're gonna work on the rebound. On the rebound, we're gonna take out the bolt on the bottom, right? So we're gonna need an 11 millimeter wrench and 11 millimeter crow's foot heat most likely not needed but most likely we're also going to need loctite red to bolt that back down and again we're, we're going to need a damper side bullet in order to get the new seal back on okay paper towels alcohol if there is anything missing i'm sure we will go over it in the video next up let's go over the parts needed for the job as for parts we're going to need seal kits so let's start off with the lowers the 50 hour 803-00945 but that is only for the 34 you need to make sure you grab the right seal kit for the right size fork all right air spring seal kit 803-00-963. Again, this is for the 34. There's different versions, so make sure you get the right seal kit for your shock. And this one gets a little bit trickier than the other two because 803-01-323, this is for a 32 and a 34, but for only the step cast version. It won't work for the regular version, okay? It's a different seal kit for the regular version, the non-step cast. So make sure that you get the right version for your, or the right seal kit for your version of fork. As for oils, for the lowers, we're gonna need 20 weight, then a little bit for the air spring. For the damper, we're gonna need five weight. Now Fox wants you to use their PTFE. Eh, I don't know, man, I mean, I'm, who knows if it makes a difference to be honest, but five weight is what you're gonna need. And we're going to need a little bit of grease, and I'm going to go with the ceram butter. But if you like zirconium, slick honey, so on and so forth, go right ahead. All right. Well, let's get on to the job. Before we work on the fork, make sure that you thoroughly clean it. All right. Get rid of any mud or dirt that's packed up inside the steer, behind the crown over here, and inside the step cast, especially when it's a step cast, because dirt could get trapped in there. Right. 
we do not want dirt crawling in after we've opened this up and started closing it back up again, right? Because that could that, that could cause some serious damage inside. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to write down our settings and we're going to start with our rebound. So we're going to take our rebound, turn it counterclockwise. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16. So our rebound, 16. Now, I can't do the low speed compression because, well, it's shot. So I have no idea what it's supposed to be at. But we can write down the air pressure. First, we take this guy off. Let's put him in here. All right. And now we are at 95.5, 95.5 plus, let's say, I don't know, five max. So, cause we lose air pressure in the line, all right? So I can't do the low speed compression. Now what we are gonna do is we are gonna let the air out as slowly as we can. There's no rush here guys. We want both chambers to empty out. Okay, we're going to vertically mount the fork. We're going to take a little bit of paper towel. Then we're going to take like a three millimeter Allen. We're going to press down on the whole fork. Let go. Do that one more time. Press down on the valve. And make sure we get all that air out of there. A lot of pressure down there. All right. Now we start opening her up. Next, we have to take out the rebound knob and on a step cast, this could be a bit of a pain in the butt. The screw is actually deep inside. It's somewhere around here, right? And you're gonna need a two millimeter with some decent length to it, right? Whether it's a T-wrench or something. And you're gonna have to sink it in there. Now to help you out, there's like in the knob itself, there's like empty spaces. And if you put it towards the light, you could see the screw. I can't see it right now uh, because of the shadows. I need to, no, oh, there it goes, I got it. So find the screw and then turn counterclockwise. Now this is a relatively long screw. I mean, it's not super long by no means, but it's gonna take quite a few turns to get the knob out. All right, there we go. So to give you an idea, that is the screw right there. All right, now we're gonna take this and we're gonna put it on the side. Don't lose that screw, keep them together. Next, we got to take out our nuts. So 10 millimeter socket. Let's start off with the air side. Again, it's deep in there. You're going to need an extension, most likely, unless you have really deep sockets. Crack it open, a bit of a crack there. And let's spin them around so we don't make too much noise. Look for the crush washer. Crush washer did not come out. It's still inside. Now for the damper side, on a 34, it's 10 millimeter, but it's a narrow 10 millimeter, right? This is a tapered socket. So a full thick 10 millimeter might give you difficulties. So put this guy in there, got him, crack. Take him out. This guy was not in there tight at all. Somebody must have opened him up. And once again, there is no crush washer. We will take care of that when we separate it. Next, we're gonna use Fox's tool over here to separate the shafts from the lower legs. We're gonna, for the step cache, you're gonna need the long one, right? The regular one won't work. Ah, why is it giving me trouble? Ooh, this guy sunk in. Interesting, he's already separated. Let's try this guy. That's weird. Okay, so we screw them in, give them a couple of taps. Well, this guy sunk in. I mean, there must have been some pressure in there. All right, but usually you would have to do this for both sides. All right, cool. Separate them. We're going to take our fork, put it in the oil pan. We're going to grab the arch. We're going to grab the crown and give it a good push. Oop. 
and we have some oil coming out. You know, it didn't come out. Oh, there it is. And there is the other crush washer. I'm gonna let this drain and I will be back. First thing we're gonna do is work on the boots, clean them out real well, take out the wipers and the foam rings in there. But first, let's put this guy on the side. And before we do that, make sure he's clean. But even more importantly, in my opinion, if you're gonna leave him on the side and you care about where you are as far as the floor getting stained or whatever it is getting stained, put some paper towel in the damper side and in the air side inside for now as we work on the lowers because whatever oil is on the inside will want to creep out and it's going to make a pool of oil wherever it is sitting so i'm going to put them on the side now i don't got to worry about it all right so first thing we are going to do is remove our foam rings and wipers for the foam ring we're just going to grab a hook be careful i mean a pick be careful over here Let's take out the ring. Actually, not too bad. Not too bad at all. I mean, there's no real dirt on it. Don't get me wrong, it's dirty, but it's not exactly muddy, right? So, now, for taking out the wipers, I like this Ice Tools tire lever. You could use any tire lever, really, that has a nice plastic coating on it, or you could use a wrench. The only thing is, you take a risk of chipping your um, paint. Ultimately, up here on the table, it's more difficult. If you do this, do it on the floor. You have more leverage. Here on the table, it's actually a bit of a pain. Sometimes it's a real pain. I might have to do this on the floor, guys. I don't have enough leverage here. Well, I had enough leverage for that one, wherever it went. Watch this one hit me right in the face. Well, that flew across the room. Okay. So... We got out our wipers. Now what we are going to do is clean the inside thoroughly and I have a little ritual for that. To clean out the boots, I have a bit of a process over here. It requires alcohol, four pieces of paper, of lint-free paper towel, although you could use regular paper towel in my opinion, a dowel and a square dowel preferred, and a rubber band, all right? So what I do first, this, and these, the step cast a little bit harder to do this because it's so deep. Take your finger, block the hole, like I could reach it, right? And then what you're going to do, if you can't reach it, take some paper towel, fold it up, and use it as a spacer between your finger and the hole. Then what I'm going to do is put a little bit of oil, uh, alcohol in here. All right. Well, by a little bit, I mean by a lot. And then I'm going to shake it and break up all the old oil that's in there, right? The goal is to try and break up the oil that's all in there from the walls. Okay. Now, when we empty it out, we're going to empty out this side first. Okay. Then we're going to do that again. All right. Shake it up. Now we empty it out on this side. You could take out the axle actually, so it doesn't annoy you. There you go. Not really important. Or you can leave it in there, right? So now we filled it up with alcohol, still a lot of oil in there. What we're gonna do, we're gonna grab our paper towel, right? We're gonna wrap it around. We're gonna leave about an inch and a half, two inches on top. We're gonna loosely wrap it, not tightly, very loosely wrap it. We're gonna take a rubber band down the middle. Tighten it. Then we're going to cut out a few inches of paper towel to create sort of like a mop. All right? And then what I'm going to do, spray alcohol in there. I'm going to go in there with the paper towel. Start counterclockwise. So we get that mopping action going. All right. And then just try and scoop up everything. Let it sit at the bottom to absorb everything at the bottom. And then slowly but surely bring it up. And go up and down. Okay. Take this guy out. 
be looking much better in there already but there's definitely some stuff on the bottom i don't know if you can see that so we're gonna do this again usually you don't have to do it more than twice if it's real bad then you might need a third time take him put him on the side for now come on i give me a break yeah all right grab the next towel should only need two side one two towels per side or two sheets per side i should say again loosely wrap them don't tightly wrap them throw a band near the middle make them tight tear some towel great like a mop and put them back in there and repeat round and round all right that is looking much, much, much. Oh yeah, he's clean. He looks real good right now. Cool. Now what we're gonna do is just take a bit of this towel, clean the top over here with your fingers. Try and get your fingernail on the inside. Now I'm gonna do the other side. I am not gonna record it. It's the exact same process, all right? Next thing what we are gonna do is inspect the bushings. Set of bushings here, another set of bushings around here. What we're looking for is scrapes, scratches, any kind of abrasion, wear marks, the uppers. Actually, the uppers look good. Yeah, I don't see anything significant on the uppers at all. The lowers, there's a little bit of wear over here on this side. There's definitely some wear up and down, but nothing really significant. Well, there's a bit on this side right here. What you're looking for, again, is like use the bottom light coming in as a reflection. And you will see like scrapes and what looks like smudges. Like over here, there's lines going up and down. Nothing too significant, more than usable, right? On the bottom over here, there is a bit of wear, but really not all that much to freak out over. All right, so that is good. Next, what we are going to do, we are gonna take our foam rings from our 50 hour seal kit. We're gonna put oil in a small cup. Don't worry about putting too much. We're going to use a good chunk of it later when we close up the, and again, this is 20 weight, 20 weight gold for this particular shock. Dunk them in there and then cover this. Let them soak. We're going to put them on the side. Make sure you cover, put the cap back on your oil so it doesn't spill. And now we are going to move on to the air spring service first step in the air spring service well we already removed our cap right now we're gonna take out the top cap for the air right 26 millimeter flat chamferless socket if you have a chamfered socket in other words a socket that has beveled edges you could actually strip this bolt better off to have a flat one right so 26 millimeters put it in there this can be a bit of a crack because these are in there with some good torque all right, try and use whatever you can as leverage. All right now, keeping it in the middle of the frame is actually a little bit tough. All right, we got it. Sweet. Yeah. All right. And we have two tokens in there. Okay, we're gonna take this whole mechanism, we're gonna put it on the side. To take out the air spring, there is a C-clip over here, right? Now, one edge of the C-clip is flat and the other one's lifted. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a blunt pick on the lifted part and we're gonna lift it up and walk it out. Just like that. All right, now we're gonna pull, oh, damn. Put a lot of oil in this thing. Oh well. We're gonna pull out our air spring. <laughs> Let me clean up this mess and I will be back. Put the air spring on the side. Let's clean up the inside of this tube. First grab a little bit of paper towel and clean the edges. 
especially up here near the threads. Try and make sure no dirt or mud goes inside. All right, and then what I do from this side, I spray alcohol in them, keep that side blocked, spray alcohol in them, take a paper towel, ball them up real good. Make sure it's a big ball, make sure it goes in there real tight. Then we're gonna grab our dowel and push them through. There's a lot of gunk in there. And he is clean. Now we're gonna look for scratches and I don't see a thing. Outstanding. I opened up the air spring, the air spring seal kit, have my vise. 10 millimeter soft jaw opening is what we're going to need. And the first thing we're going to do is separate this bolt from this shaft. Before we do that, make sure to spray alcohol on the shaft. All right, then we're going to take it, put it in there pretty tight. Now we do have an O-ring over here. We do not want to burn it because we are going to use heat. So we are going to take out this O-ring. There we go. Leave it on the side so we remember which one it is. Take it out. We're going to apply a little bit of heat because there is Loctite in there. Not too much. We don't need to go crazy. Just warm it up. Done. Grab a 12 millimeter wrench. Make sure you're tight down there. Make sure you're tighter down there. Wow, a little bit more heat on that. All right, let's try that. There we go. That worked. Ooh, he's stiff in there. Holy cow, he's stiff. That's a lot of Loctite in here. Jeez. That's ridiculously stiff. Okay. Nice, finally starting to loosen. Jeez. Man, they weren't messing around. All right. Ta da Yep, Loctite red. Cool. We have another seal in here we want to take out. Yeah, this one should be pretty easy. Let's just separate them. So, we have our seal head and we have our bumper. Let's start with the piston. So, we have a quad ring that we need to remove. Use a blunt tool to remove it or a plastic tool. All right, it's our quad ring. Let's clean off all any old grease. All right, clean the shaft well. And we're gonna clean one more area before we start assembling everything. And that is gonna be the inside of the threads. To clean the inside of the threads, one of these two brushes comes in handy. We wanna get that old Loctite out of here. Much as we can. Am I in frame? Holy cow, sorry guys. All right. Now, let's grab a clean cloth, let's twist it a bit, put it inside. Go as deep as you can. And pull them out. They're looking pretty good. It's still some Loctite residual. Let me try and go in there and get it. And we want a really good connection. Oh yeah, that helped. That helped quite a bit actually. I'm gonna do this one more time. Actually, let's take this side. Put them in there. And, oh yeah, that's a lot better. It's a little bit, but insignificant. We're not worried about it. 
not going to kill us. Now, what we want to do is we forced whatever oil was in there out is we're going to find our new quad ring, which is this one right here. Take our grease, put it inside the seat. Put on the quad ring. Now, when we put it on, make sure it is not twisted. See, like right there, it is twisted. There's a perfect example. I'm going to twist, grab a blunt tool, go underneath it, and try and untwist it. There we go. Now we are good. This guy's done. We're going to put him on the side. Now, we have two O-rings on this guy, one on the inside and one on the outside. All right, grab a blunt tool. Just grab the outside since he's easier. Now we're gonna grab the inside right here at the top. That's a quad ring. Let's pop him out. Okay, let's clean him good. Get rid of any old oil and grease. Let's clean the inside. Make sure the bushings are in good shape. They're in great shape. Find the replacements. This guy's gotta be this guy here, yes. And this one here is this guy right there. Or is it this guy here? Actually, I think it's this guy here, yep. All right. Actually, let's do the inside one first. I'm gonna tuck him in. Try and get one corner in to a seat it's right above here. Oop, nearly had it. Try and get him into a seat. And then we're going to try and force him all in. <clears throat> there we go. Make sure he's not twisted. Okay. Grab a larger one, put some grease on him. Put him in his seat. Hmm. There we go. This guy is done. Now what we need to do is clean this guy real well before we put the seals back on him. To clean him up, we're going to grab a wire brush because he is metal. We're going to clean off all the old Loctite residue. All right. Cool mom. Get rid of all this before it ends up somewhere inside. Now we have these two seals here that we need to replace. Oh, both of them came, so that's obviously this guy here. So that's the old, that one's the new. And this guy is obviously this guy here. So that's the old, and this one's the new. A little grease on him and the thinner one goes on top over here and the thicker one goes on the inside if I could get them over come on come on Oop. butterfingers I'm not nearly there come on in. there we go a little bit of grease on him over these fine threads and boom we are ready to put them inside next we put it all back together first we're going to grab our piston put a little bit of grease on the shaft take our bumper boom okay then what we are going to do clean the shaft good a little bit of alcohol and get any grease off of them I'm going to put them back in our vise. All right, because we need to put in this seal over here. So, to put him in, you could try and risk 
putting them in straight in. Problem is that this is a quad seal. It's got sharp edges. This has got sharp edges being metal. So they make this little piston. I mean, this little piston, this little bullet tool. Put it in there, put a little bit of grease around it just to make life a little bit easier. And then you take this guy and boom. Now you're sure. You don't need them technically, but it ensures that you are not going to do any damage to them. Put the bullet tool on the side. Now we want to clean any grease that's in these threads. Okay, make sure he's free of grease. There we go. Now, we need to lock this guy in here. Fine threads go in. All right. So what we're gonna do, make sure he is free of any grease. All right. Take a little bit of Loctite red, put around the top threads. All right. Just like that. Now, what we're going to do is let him sink into the thread. Don't do that if you could help it or avoid it. Blow into the threads and let him sink into the threads. All right, see the way he sinks in? Now we're going to take him and we're going to put him in. Put him straight in. There we go. Push them all the way down. If it gets to a point where you can't do it by hand, we grab our wrench, 12 millimeter again. Bring them all the way down. And then when he makes it to the end, torque wrench, 12 millimeter crow foot, 5.7 newton meters. Grab them in the corner. And, oh, oh, need to make them tighter. 5.75, perfect. He is done. Before we put him back in, we're gonna grab a syringe and we're gonna grab three milliliters or cc's, whatever your preference is, same thing. We're gonna put it inside, actually we're gonna put four in the syringe. Yeah. Okay, four cc's or milliliters. There we go. Good stuff. Let these guys keep on soaking in there. Close this guy up. Let this guy sit here so he doesn't make a mess. Okay, so first what we're gonna do, grab our finger, grab some grease. We're gonna put a thin coat of grease inside. Okay, all the way around. Then we're gonna put a good amount of grease on the air piston. Okay, over here, over here, actually before I do that, okay, make sure it's completely covered. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create Sort of like a dam in here, okay? Just like that. All right. Cool. Now, with that dam, I'm gonna grab one milliliter of oil and put it inside. All right. There we go. Good enough. Okay, now we're gonna push this all the way up. All right, now we're gonna take it, make sure it's all the way up. Now we are gonna take him, we're gonna roll him in till he fits all the way in. There we go. Okay. Clean up all this oil that fell out because it's really sticky stuff. Now we're going to put in our spring. Let's clean the inside. We're going to use the flat side first. So 
you notice one's flat, one's sort of lifted. The lifted side is how you take them out. The flat side is how we put them in. We want to make sure he goes in his seat. Come on. There we go. Finish up the top. First, let's clean this guy here, and he has a seal that we need to. Actually, these guys come apart pretty easy, actually. Okay. Oh, not on the frame. Great. All right. This guy's got a seal right here. We need to replace him. He is this guy right here. It's the new one. Actually, before I put grease on him, let's clean the seat, clean the threads, make sure there's nothing on him. Okay. Now we can put a little bit of grease on this guy. Slide him back in. I'm in the seat. There goes that. Again, clean the threads. Cool. Now we are right, actually. So we got the tokens. Slide one token in. Slide the other token in. Do the other token. Just like that. He's ready to go. Now, <clears throat> grab three CCs or the remaining three CCs and dump them in. Again, 20 weight. Then we grab this guy. Screw him down by hand. Always by hand first. Always by hand first. Put them in by hand until you know you can't. This way you know you haven't stripped them because those are really fine threads. And you don't want to mess that one up. Okay. Now... We grab our socket. And last but not least, our torque wrench, 24 newton meters. Oops. Again, chamferless. Mm. This can be a bit of a pain being on the table like this. Okay. Hey, actually, it's supposed to be 24.8, so I'm dead on the nose. And to finish him off, what we are going to do, just to make sure you stay safe, we're going to put in about 20 PSI of air for now. This way, we know he's not going to sink in easily. Lift him up so he doesn't make noise on the table. There we go. More than enough. Excellent. Get rid of all this stuff. And our air spring is done. Now for the damper. So the first thing we are going to do is remove the knob. And we need a 2.5, hopefully this thing comes out, 2.5 millimeter Allen to take out the top screw on the low speed compression. Let's take that out, technically. Okay. Hopefully. Well, like I said, we know there's something wrong here. We just don't know what it is. There we go. Well, it's dirty, but not the end of the world. Actually, it's rusty inside. Holy cow. Yeah, I'm definitely going to take this thing apart down to the last, well, the last component. Take this guy, put the screw inside him. We will deal with him later. We're going to put him on the side. Separate the damper, 26 millimeter chamferless socket. This time I'm going to put him on a rack so it doesn't slip around as easy. Okay. Oh. Oh, 
I forgot to take out. Well, at least to clean the inside out. <laughs> yeah. Don't forget to take out that cloth. Although, again, you saw what just happened, right? Let's clean out the threads while we're here. Clean out the tube. Same process as before. Get some alcohol in them. Grab paper towel, squish them in a ball. Make sure he's tight. Take towel and he is clean. All right, nothing wrong with them. Although usually here, there's not going to be anything wrong with them. Let's put them on the side for now. Let's clean our damper shaft. Oh, oil on the outside. And this next step, it could be a pain in the butt. There is a really small C clip on the inside here, right? And to get to it, there are two holes on each side of this dial. You have to get a small, small pick. And that's the biggest problem with this. The holes are so small, you can't use a regular pick. Like typical picks are a little bit thicker at the tips. This one has to be real, real small to get in there in order to be able to lift that C-clip to be able to get it out of there. I absolutely highly recommend using a magnet when you do this job to catch that C-clip because once it pops out, it has a tendency to just want to fly across the room. Good luck finding it. Don't lose it. Fox doesn't sell that C-clip, okay? So make sure you do not lose it. Now, you might need two picks. In fact, I got three picks. This could turn into a major pain in the butt, guys. All right, sometimes it comes out real easy. Other times, not so much. So let's lubricate it first and put some alcohol on top, right? Now, again, we want to find a hole, okay, and see if we could get the pick underneath it. Okay. We just lift it a little bit. Now, try the other side. While I'm here, I'm going to get the magnet. So, the alcohol is just to add a little bit of lubrication to help them out. I'm going to Boy, I can't even get under him. This guy almost looks like he's corroded in there, to be honest. Wait, this one's going to be fun. Aren't you guys happy you took on this project? Come on. Where's that hole? There you are. Oh, man. This guy absolutely does not want to get... Underneath them, let's try this one. As you can see, I've bent all my tips from other forks. Okay, this guy's gonna be real stubborn. Real stubborn. And this guy, I popped him up. So he comes up. Here's the tip of him. Let's see if I can get underneath the tip and get him out. There he is. Oh, I had him. Okay, so we know we're gonna get him now. So in my case, yours might be different. Go underneath, all right? Just like this. Keep them up there. Make sure you have your magnet real close to it. Figure out a way. And then we're going to find the edge. The edge is right there. And we're going to lift it. Did I get it? Nope. So it might be easier to get this guy. So this guy's been pretty weakened. Come on. Nope. He's trying. I'm nearly out. There he is. All right. We got him. And you know what? He looks like he is somewhat corroded, to be honest. But we got him out. That's a start. Hey, like I said, this is a pain in the butt, guys. So either it's going to be easier for you or you're going to have some difficulties with it, right? But worst case scenario, try and lift it from one of the two holes and then use another pick with a magnet, always the magnet, to find the edge. When I mean the edge, I mean like this part here. Scoop underneath it and try and lift it out. All right. Next, what we're going to do is take the screw off of the low-speed compression knob. Put the knob back on the side 
And we're going to screw this guy into the knob. All right. Now we should be able to pull them straight. Wow. Wow. I can't pull them up. You know what? That might be our problem. Something might be wrong with the detent ball in the spring. It might have popped out into a different spot. Let's see if I could pull this guy, this guy all the way down to make sure we got... Okay, he's definitely screwed all the way down. So we got enough teeth. Let's grab a plier. Let's see if we could lift him up like this. Wow, holy cow. That, oh man, there goes my ball and my spring. I was gonna, there's our problem. Okay, now I got a bigger problem and a much bigger problem. There was a ball and a spring in there and both of them popped up. I heard one of them fall. I have no idea where the other one is. Oh man, I gotta go hunting now, guys. I'll be back. To say the least, I lucked it out big time. So there's our ball and there's the spring. They were literally on the carpet next to me, no more than about five inches from each other. And I found it with a very powerful magnet within the first few minutes. I heard the ball hit the verticals and I figured one of them was there. I had no idea if I was gonna find both. So I got super lucky that they both fell in the same spot, about five feet from me, but the same spot. So we got a couple of problems over here. One, there is some serious corrosion which is the reason the low speed compression knob isn't working. And I can see some corrosion on the inside, right? So I'm not sure if I'll be able to clean this up. Well, I'll probably be able to clean it up in order to be able to make it work. There is corrosion on the ball. Um, we might have to replace all this stuff. We'll find out as we go deeper into it. But for now, your magnet, put your C-clip on it, put the ball on it, put the spring on it, and put them both in a safe spot next to the side. Do not lose these. We're going to take this guy, we're going to put him on the side for now. Next step, I'm going to empty out the oil from the inside. Ooh, that is nasty, nasty, nasty stuff. That should be a really translucent color. So this has definitely been a while since this was serviced, and I'm pretty sure that it wasn't serviced when it was supposed to. There's some play, a good amount of play, actually, in the shaft. Are you there, mine? Yes, I'm sort of in the screen. Good amount of play over here, so that assembly is worn out. At least the bearing in there is worn out. A uh, bearing, bushing. Okay. Just a reminder: dispose of the oil properly. Don't put it down the drain. Don't put it down the toilet. Don't throw it outside. Don't put it in the garbage. Put it in a bottle clearly marked. Do not drink, and give it to a local bike shop. Give it to an auto shop. Bring it somewhere where they could dispose of it correctly. All right. Next, we're going to separate it. Uh, there are these flat spots over here. We want to get it now. Typically you could do it like this. Ultimately, I'm going to do it like this so I can show you what it looks like. Well, it is going to drip on the bottom. Great. All right. I know most of it came out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a 19 millimeter or a three quarter inch wrench and make sure I'm tight. There we go. Take this guy. And we are going to separate them. And there is our full rebound assembly. All right. First, we're gonna start with the compression stick because I wanna see what's going on over here to make sure that there's nothing major that's broken that's stopping it from working, all right? So the first thing we need to do is remove the bladder. Now, there is a spring in here, or a C-clip, I should say, right? There's a lifted part over here, or an angled part, and a flat part. So we're gonna go underneath the angle part with a blunt pick. Just lift it up, just like that, and walk it out. Done. I'm going to put that on the side. Then this ring will come out. All right. Now, we have to separate the shaft. There's two splitting points, basically. Over here is a, well, I forgot what they call it, but where the oil goes through anyway. So we have one part over here, this part over here that holds this part and this part together. When we separate them, we have no idea which way he's going to come out first. We always want the bottom part to come out as opposed to the top part because the top part from here up is where all our shims are. 
And if he separates from there and you're not careful, you could drop your shims and well, then you're gonna have to figure out what order they go in again, right? So what we're gonna do is grab a 26 millimeter chamferless socket and a six millimeter, very long, this is a rare time that this length actually helps, six millimeter Allen. We're gonna go all the way to the bottom. Okay, I'm there. And then what I'm gonna do, could you see this in frame? I don't know if you can see this, is see if I could unscrew it from the top. Hopefully it's separating this side up. And we are gonna find out because what we wanna do is create a little bit of separation between the bladder and this cap over here in order to pull down the bladder. So now that I know I can separate it by hand, let's see, now hold it down this way. Whenever you're separating it, never separate it like this. Always separate it downwards. Why? Because if the bottom separates instead of this part, or if the cap part separates instead of this part here, well, you don't want your shims to fall out, right? This way, if it separates from here, from here down, then your shims will be intact, right? So you always want to do it this way. Let's find out. Yep, it's separated at the bottom. So, and that's why we want to keep it down like that. Imagine these are all your shims. If you had separated the other way around, everything would have fallen out, right? So we're going to take the whole cap and leave it right there. We're going to deal with that later. So now we have our bladder that we want to pull down. Now, technically, we could just lift this ring a little bit and we could pull our bladder out, okay? So we're gonna put our bladder here. So in here, this is where that six millimeter went into. We could separate it. This, like I said, three separation points. This, I'm sure there's a name for it. I can't think of it right now. This guy here basically keeps them together. All right. So, oops, I was gonna say, there's two shims in here. One shim, a spring, and a shim, right? So now what we're gonna do is put that guy there. We're gonna put the shim here. Okay, and then should be just a spring. Now we know that the spring has a wide part and a narrow part. The narrow part faces the cap. Okay, and then we're gonna put this spring here. I mean, this shim here, and that guy goes there. Just like always, to remove shims, let's use a zip tie or a clip and remove them all one shot. Okay, we are gonna come back to this guy later. So these are our shims, we'll put them here, all right? Now over here, we have, actually the rest of this is pretty easy. There's really not that much going on over here. So we have this cap and there's our plate that closes and opens the ports, all right? So this looks normal, that looks normal. There is a special way to put that in, by the way. This is the knob, and there's a wave washer underneath the knob. Let's keep that intact. Okay, now we want to separate. I'm telling you, the problem with this whole assembly is the corrosion on this guy here and the corrosion on the ball. So now I want to open all this up so we can clean them up. Now this guy is a little bit tricky. There is, again, a C-clip at the bottom over here. But this guy is very, very sensitive and we do not want to break them. Technically, they do sell it, this one here. So what we're gonna do is try and get underneath it. We're gonna put them in a soft jaw. And we're gonna be very careful with this guy, right? You can put them in a flat soft jaw, it doesn't matter. And what we're gonna do is grab our fine picks again we're going to try and walk him up. So we're going to grab the edges and we're going to try and pop them out just like that. And there we go. I just lifted him from his seat. All right. We don't want to overstretch him. Do not overstretch him. Okay. There we go. Oops. I just put him back in the seat. Great. Got the camera in front of me and I can't see all that well. Wait a minute. Okay, oops, it's not what I want to do. Come on, hop off. I don't want to take them out like straight out this way. I want to take them upwards, vertically, because we do not want to completely overstretch them. Okay, there we go. Now I got him. Come on. Well, I just had them on each side, actually. Hold on. 
You can't see it on one side. I'm doing it blind with the camera in front of me. Huh. A little bit. Ah. Okay, now I can see both sides. Good. What we're trying to do is just separate them a little bit and walk him up. Just like, come on, I just got this one corner here. Work at this guy. There we go. This is exactly what I want to do right here. So don't stretch him out, pop him upwards. Okay, and he's got some corrosion on top. Now, underneath this cap is a spring and a ball. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is tap him from the bottom. Actually, I don't remember if it was the bottom or the top. Oh boy, he is in there. There we go, from the bottom. Look at all that rust. Problem number two, leave him on the side. Now this cap should come off. And again, inside, even more rust. We have, there's our ball. Right here. And there's our spring. Let me take out the spring first and then I'll turn the ball. There's our spring. All nice and rusty, just the way you guys like it. And there's our ball right there. Do not lose this ball. This is what gives you your clicks for your high speed. Okay. Now I'm going to clean everything up. What we're going to do first is see if we could tackle that rust. I'm going to grab a small jar. I don't have replacement parts. I'm going to put a little bit of CLR in there. We're going to take this guy, this guy, the spring, the ball, and this guy here. In fact, I'm going to cover that guy. I don't care about the seal. We're going to take care of the seal later. And you know what? I'm going to grab this spring too. And we're going to let him sit there for a little bit and see if we could clean that rust off of there and make everything workable again. The rest of it looks in great condition. There's nothing wrong with the rest of it. Moisture got inside and just started rusting things up. All right, I won't watch you guys watch this unless you really wanna watch this. You guys wanna watch this? I'll leave it there if you wanna watch it. I'm just kidding. And we're done. So I cleaned everything, CLR did its job. Then I grabbed a brass wire brush, just scraped off any remaining rust that was left in some pits, right? But everything is clean for the most part. There's, well, nothing really shows anymore. So that worked out really well. There was a lot of rust on this, but this is aluminum, so it wasn't because of it, but there was a lot of dirt, mud, and rust in this thing. This does have some marking on it, but ultimately it's above the seal, so we should be good. Anything below the seal is what's inside the system. Anything above it is outside the system, right? So just when I was done cleaning all this up and getting rid of all that surface rust and everything, what do I find? Boom, a service kit that has pretty much all these parts. I totally forgot I had a spare one hanging around. Out of curiosity, I went looking around and I happened to come across an A20-05-330-kit. This is a top cap service kit. Comes with the top cap, it comes with the ball, the spring, the washer, and the clip. It doesn't come with this guy here, nor this guy here, right? So, I mean, that was just a total waste. If I remembered earlier, I would have just done this and well, I would have been further ahead. <laughs> so what are you gonna do, man? Two little brain cells left, I'm telling you. So what I'm gonna do moving forward is replace all these because there is some pitting. The bearing is actually pretty bad shape, but it really doesn't matter. But ultimately, I'm going to replace him since I got a brand new kit and he will be good to go. So let's put everything back together. So I opened up the kit. The new is on the top. The old is on the bottom. You look at the bearing. Like I said, this isn't even round. This actually looks like it has a chunk missing from the side of it, right? So that is garbage. The spring, I cleaned it real good, but garbage. The washer pretty much looks the same, really, but garbage since they give us a new one. I don't have to worry about reshaping this guy. They gave us a new one. Thank God. And we have a new screw. So, oh, another thing, I opened up the rest of the damper seal kit on this side, and you know what I noticed? Look at this. 
we have a C-clip for that top, that little C-clip we tried removing. I do not ever remember them including this. Guys, am I losing my mind? Was this ever in this kit? I never ever remember seeing it. In fact, I think I have like a couple of videos on Fit4 Forks out there and this wasn't in those kits. Uh, this sort of freaked me out actually. I'm starting to think I'm losing my mind over here, but if anybody remembers this actually being in the kit, I thought they didn't even sell this to be honest. Like I said, this is the one that goes in here on top of that cap before taking out that screw. So, or taking out this whole mechanism here. So, but anyway, let's put all this together now. So, this guy basically goes on the inside here, right? But before we put him in, there is a washer. Now, this guy is an optional uh, washer, uh, seal. This guy's an optional seal. In fact, all this that I'm doing over here, guys, you don't need to do it, right? You really don't. If you don't have an issue with your dials, you really don't need to go through all this. You could really simplify this the service on this fork by just changing this seal over here because you're gonna have to take this out to do the bleed anyway and changing the two three seals inside the rebound right so this i did because obviously well this low speed compression wasn't working there was a reason for it so what i'm gonna do is take out this o-ring here and we are gonna find the replacement which is right there okay out with the old and with the new we're gonna take some grease we're gonna put it on there and we're going to take it and boom, this one's done. We have another O-ring here. This guy could be, he is small and he is relatively hard and not all that easy to remove sometimes, especially with gloves on. These small ones, sometimes they could be a real pain. Okay. Okay. Problem is they're hard and small. My end frame, yes. I have a tough one in frame. Sometimes I forget, so my apologies. Huh? Huh? Get out. Ah. Ow. Stab my ow. I stab myself 15 times now. I'm trying to get this guy out. Come on. Don't break. Just come out. Okay. Like I said, unbelievable. Come on, man. Give me a break. Just get out. There. Come on. Oh. Unbelievable. There we go. Crying out. No. What's going on here? Why am I having such a tough time with this guy? Actually, it's not the first time. Come. Okay. I'm not kidding when I say it's pretty hard considering his size. For crying out loud. You believe that? All for one seal. <sighs> Make sure. Okay. Yep, like I said, any kind of pitting is above. We don't have to worry about it. So let's replace this guy. And that should be him right there. Yep. Out with the old and with the new. A little bit of grease on him. Now we're going to put him back on. This is going to be a little bit tricky. Because he is small. And he is a little bit hard. Try and grab him with your thumb thumbs with both thumbs think like thumbnails basically put it up here so you guys can see it and stretch them over just like that and done yay next we're going to put in the dial so first we're going to take let me bring this closer a little bit of grease on the seal all right now we're also going to put a little bit of grease in this little area here, right? Where the spring and the ball sit. So, grab some grease, put it in there. And that's gonna keep the seal, the ball in place. We we'll go to sink it in there, right? So we're gonna, one thing to note, there's three dimples. Those are your clicks, basically. Try and position them. Don't have to be, but try and position them towards 
the ball, right? And hopefully uh, it will help with inserting the ball. Okay. When you put this in, press it down until you feel that click, the spring actually bounce in there, right? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little bit of grease, put on the tip, just a bit, put on the tip of your pick, and then we're gonna take the ball and we're gonna sink it into that corner in there, that spot, okay? Right up against the axle, just like that. If you guys could see it, probably can't see it because of all the grease, but it's basically touching this, okay? And the rest of the opening is behind it. Now we're gonna take a little bit of grease. We're gonna put the opening of the spring at the tip of the pick. Now we're gonna press it against the ball, compress it and try and sink it. This could take a few tries, okay? Hmm. Nearly had it. Okay. That wasn't it. Brand new spring is stiff, that's what it is. Let's try this guy. Although I've never done it with this spring, I've usually done it with the other picks. Oop, do I have him? Did him? I think I, oh, I thought I had him. Press and sink. Oh. Then he's got to be at the tip, just like that. And you got to put it up against the ball. There we go. Now I got him. All right. And that's how you do that one. Let me just sink him down, make sure he's in there. Yep, he is in there. Then. We are going to take, you know what? Put some grease on him. I don't know. Actually, it doesn't matter if it's on both sides. But at least put some grease on the bottom side to help with prevent any future corrosion. Now we're gonna sink this guy all the way down, right? Now this guy's tricky. We don't want to put them in this way. We want it because he could open up and then it'll stretch open, right? This is one of those inner type clips, C-clips. You have outers that squish out, that push out. You have other ones that squeeze in. So what we're going to do is we're going to put them up just like this. Put them against him. Oops, make sure you don't sink the middle guy. And then what we're going to do is push him down bit by bit, okay? So just like that until we get him down. Oops, whole thing just popped off. So, let's try that again. So, there we go. Just like that, right? Now, we're just gonna slowly, side by side, bit by bit, just bring him down, take your time, there is no rush. We do not wanna stretch him, we want him to keep his tension so he falls in his seat and stays in his seat, all right? So side by side, just like that. And make sure you're pushing up on this room. The whole dial component will wanna come down. Now there's gonna be the step over here. You're gonna to have to climb over that step, not too hard. Okay, now I'm at the step. That side's down. This side's gonna be a little bit harder. That size down. Then just bit by bit, back forth till we're down. There we go, nearly there. Now we're getting there. Okay, now we're at the bottom. We need to make sure he sits in his seat. There is a seat for him over there. Make sure the whole dial doesn't, this dial doesn't go down, right? So press up against the dial and sink that, whoop, I just heard him clip in. Nope, thought I did. 
make sure the washer's all the way down. And I have to go to my hand up too slippery now. Okay. Let's see if we can do it this way. One on each side. Let's see if we can do it on the camera so you can see it. Come on each side and and that's it. We are in. Totally solid. All right. Yay. One last thing. Next, we're going to put in our compression knob, right? Or at least our dial, right? That's what actually activates it. Before we do that, I forgot to mention before, we could test to make sure that our clicks are working. One, two, three. That's the middle. Okay. So we're good there. We know it's all working. So now we have our compression, not technically our, our compression switch, and we have the lockout plate. Now the lockout plate, the compression switch at the bottom has two nipples, nipples, large one and a small one. And we need to make sure that the plate aligns with those nipples properly, right? In other words, the big hole goes with the big nipple and the small one goes with the small nipple. But if you look at that right now, it's not sitting evenly, right? So it's on an angle. All right, so if I flip this over, boom, now it's sitting in the middle, right, the way it should. So we know this part goes down. So what we're going to do is install this guy in the switch. He's oblong, as is the hole he goes into. Grab a retaining clip plier, put him underneath those two holes there. Right, come on, get in there. What the, get in there, perfect. Make sure the wave washer's on there. Now, we got the small side on this side. I'm gonna grab the small side here, the back sides on the, the big sides on the back side. And let's just fit this guy in quick, quick. Oh, that's giving me troubles. I should've gone in already. There we go, all right. So he is in. Now we know this part here goes on top. So find a big hole. There it is. Actually, let me use this guy here. Now we're going to take a pick and align the holes. And he is sitting perfectly. Now we're going to take this, uh, I forgot what they call this, but ultimately has a ball right at one end. Well, if you look inside here, there is a, a notch. We need that ball to line up with that notch when we sink it in, basically. And once he's lined up, he will go in on his own. You might need a little bit very gentle here. Don't go too crazy and scratch him up. Come on. For some reason, he's stuck. Shouldn't be stuck. There we go. Come on. Wow. He's not going in. He should have slipped in by now. Hmm. Ah, the ball came out. Don't lose that ball. Whatever you do, don't lose it. All right. Make sure all this is sitting back down. It's sitting back down properly. Find the groove. There's the groove. Ball goes in that groove. It's the only groove. There's only one groove, right? So make sure he's aligned. Why is he giving me a hard time? This usually is not all that hard. Look at this. What's going on over here? This thing is jinxed. Come on, sink in. Why is he not sinking into the hole? Try that again. I'm right on top of that hole. Like I said, you guys might run into this too. This is the first time I've ever had trouble. Usually this guy sinks in pretty good actually. So I don't know why this is happening. 
Honestly, it's not making sense. There's a groove. There's a hole. Jeez, man. Stubborn. Holy cow. Okay. That is in. We are doing great, I think. To inspect them, we're gonna one by one take them out and lie them down. But remember, always check them, always check them because these guys stick together. Oof. One, see what I mean? One stuck in the back. Two, I just want to make sure everything's good because, like I said, I have no idea the history of this shack. I mean, fork. Three, seven. There you go. Always rub them together. Four, five. I'd be surprised if one stuck behind here. That's one. Okay. That's another big one. All right. See? Always rub them together. Always rub them together. This guy's a thick one. I can feel it. Okay. Let me clean them up. They look good. I'm just going to give them a quick cleaning and we will put them back in. So I cleaned them all and they are ready to go back in. Now, remember if you take these apart, first, don't take them apart. You really don't need to do any of this stuff. I'm just going to say it again, right? But if you do take them apart or take them out, just remember which order you took them out in, right? When you put them in the on the zip tie or the tie wrap. So in my case, this goes in first and this goes closer to this side here. So we're going to start off with this guy. We're going to put him in. There's one. There's two, there's three, four, five, spacer, 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 shim, and last shim. Make sure he's all sitting in there and he's not all sitting in there. Come on, don't stick to my fingers, just sit in there. All right, now they're all sitting in there. All right, so now we are gonna take this guy and we're gonna screw him down. Just be careful, always by hand first. Make sure he touches the base. Okay. Then what we're going to do is we are going to unscrew them a little bit until we see the seat or the bladder, just like that. All right. So remember, just leave him like that. Make sure he doesn't come apart and leave him down. Now we're going to deal with the bladder. So starters, let's clean the outside since I'm at it and clean the inside. Okay, take some paper towel, ball it up. Uh, and then grab a dowel, a small dowel, put it through. Uh, uh, done. Yep, he is clean on the inside. All right. So this is the top side. The part with the seat is the top side. The part with the thread outside, that's at the bottom, okay? And if we remember correctly, these shims and that spring sit in there. So ultimately, the shim goes first. Make sure he sits flat. There we go. He's flat. Now, remember, it's a cone spring. The small part sticks up. And we got our next shim. Okay. So, this is our old. I'll well just leave him down. This is our old bladder. Now remember the orientation of the spring. We've got a narrow side, a thick side. The wide side of the spring is facing towards the narrow side, right? So we're gonna take our bladder, old one, and we got a new one. We're gonna put him in. Damn. There we go. All right, so. Now, we got a wide side of the bladder and a narrow side. The narrow side faces down. The wide side goes up because it goes in there, right? So this is our top side, so that means it goes in like this. 
Just made me forgot I was in the screen where I was recording this. Okay, so that's that. So now what we are going to do is take this guy and close him up. Right, Oop, by hand first. See, I nearly went to crooked over there. Always by hand first. Okay. Now what we can do is take a little bit of grease. Just put them on the edge of the bladder. Now remember, this is the seat, right? So we got to take the bladder. We got to force it into his seat. That's a new one, but we got it all the way around. We are good. Now we're closing this guy up. Screw it all down together, one mechanism, and then we'll torque it all down. Okay, we're going to put a little bit of alcohol on the shaft to get any grease off of it. I'm going to put it back into the vise, again around a 15 millimeter hole. I'm going to grab our chamferless socket, 6.2 newton meters. It's going to torque everything one shot, basically, right? So, might take a bit. Try and be accurate with this. 6.25. We are good. Now what we're gonna do is, we don't wanna clamp it down, we just want it to sit in a large enough hole where the metal ring could just hold it, but not lock onto the actual body, just like that, because I wanna be able to press down, okay? So just like this, I wanna be, well, I gotta move this more out. I wanna be able to press down in order to essentially sink the rubber, the bladder inside the ring. So first what we're going to do is take the metal ring, put it inside. Now it's sitting inside the ring, right? And then what we're going to do, if you notice, we have again an angled side, a flat side. We're going to take our lock ring. We're going to push down on the bladder and find the seat for the lock ring. And then we're going to walk the rest of it in until it all snaps in. You might need a pick for this. Gonna, oop, nearly had it. Mm, I had it. Again, you want to push down the bladder to stretch it in order to expose the seat for this ring, just like that. See the way it goes in? So now it's going to be a little bit tricky. And, and, there we go. Nearly had it. Done. Cool. Our compression stack is done. We're gonna leave this open for now because we're gonna to have to bleed it and this needs to be open for the bleed. Now we work on our rebound rod. All right, first thing we're gonna do is clean off the inside or the outside, move all grease with alcohol, and then we're gonna put in an eight millimeter hole. All right, now if you notice over here, there's a screw, it's a two millimeter Allen. We're gonna remove that. Now when we remove it, we wanna be somewhat careful here because there is a ball inside there. All right, and a spring. There is the, actually grab a magnet. There is our spring and our ball. All right, so we're gonna put that on the side. Next up, there's an O-ring right here at the base. We're gonna take it out. Okay. There we go. Them on the side for now so we don't forget them. Then we're going to heat this guy up and we are going to remove him with an 11 millimeter. Well, maybe I might not have to heat him up. Let's find out. Actually, let's do it this way to be safe. Oh, sometimes you need heat, sometimes you don't. And this time I don't. All right, so now we're going to take this guy, open him up, unscrew him completely. The whole inner shaft will come out. Well, at least this whole thing will come out. All right, and there are some parts in here. There's some seals that we're going to have to change. Let's put him on the side. Okay, so next, we'll take out our, uh, I forgot the name, I'm getting tired. Okay, that takes care of that guy for now. First things first, we're gonna take the rebound shaft, we're gonna unscrew it. So hold on to the body over here. We're gonna unscrew it, unscrew it all the way, and we're gonna separate it. Now, 
We have an O-ring on the inside here <clears throat> and an O-ring over here. All right, let me put the shaft out on the side. First, let's go for the O-ring on the inside since he's a little bit trickier to get. There we go. Should turn sideways. Leave him on the side. Now we're going to grab this O-ring. Again, this one's going to be a little bit tricky because he's stiff and small, just like the other one we tried to take out. I don't know. Same frame? Yes. Okay. Come on. Uh -huh. There we go. Done. Okay. Now, we're going to remove all the old Loctite red. Oh, sounded real good. Ooh. Wow. Boy, man, this thing ain't messing around. Oh man, am I in frame? I'm not in frame. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, I'm gonna need a more aggressive brush than a brass brush to get the rest off. Grab a metal brush. This is metal, so we don't have to worry about it. All right. That's good enough. Now what we are going to do, because there's grease all over these guys, and well, now we got grease and debris. Let's clean them both down real good. Because we are not going to use shock grease for this. We have to use regular grease. Let's clean them. Clean the threads. Because that's where we're going to have to apply grease. Put them on the side up there. Clean this guy. Let's make sure we clean the inside. Spray them down, just like that. Grab a clean cloth, twist them up real good. Put them inside. Comes out the other side, so close, so close. Come on, come on, come on. Give me some, give me some. Oh, I'll just do this side independently without going all the way through. All right, now let's find our replacement O-rings. Wow, crack, I don't see a replacement O-ring. That's not good. That is this guy here for sure. So we found a replacement here. But we don't have a replacement for the other one. Now, I'm not too worried about it in this case. He's definitely not in here. That is not the same. Yep. How about this guy here? Yeah, they only gave us one of these when they should have gave us two. So, same one, actually. So, I'm not too worried about him. Again, it's not like he's moving. He's just stopping oil from coming through. So, first, we're going to take the small one, and we're going to put it into the base over here. All right. Actually... Make sure these threads are clean. Okay, now they're clean. So, I'm going to take a little bit of grease, put them on the O-ring, and he goes on the inside here. That might be a little bit tricky. What we're going to do is squeeze them in, get one side in. What happened to my... Oh, I'm going to use this. I'm going to get one side in, just like that. All right. And then, um, anyway. can't find my small pick. I don't know what I do with my small pick. Is this guy going to fit? Okay. Now we got that side in. There he is. Let's try this guy. Oop. 
Uh, is that gonna work? Oh. Okay. Now, nope, you were in. Now you are in. So you gotta put them on the seat first and then we're gonna go to the other side and we're gonna try and tap the opposite side in. Oop, just about had him. Oh, nearly had him. There we go. Nope. Come, why is he being such a pain? Usually this, usually this one here is not all that hard. Oh, most of them's in there. There we go. All right, now we are in. Look at that, man. Temperamental, jeez. Okay, now we have this guy. We're gonna put some grease on him. And we're gonna put him back here. So he is stiff, so we'll put him on the ground. Again, do the same thing. Maybe I could do him up here where you guys can see him. Grab with both of your thumbs, put him around the edge, and then you should be able to just stretch him around. But again, he's a small, hard one. There we go, just like that, just like that. There we go. And we're in. All right, now we need regular grease. We take regular grease, not shark grease, and put on the threads. Now that we got the regular grease on them, we're going to take them, we're going to put them back in, we're going to screw them back down. Okay. Oops, don't trap your glove in there. Now we have one more o-ring for this guy. This is the old, this is the new. Put a little bit of grease on him. And we're going to slip this guy down into his seat here. Ready there. And we are done. Next, we're gonna put a new seal head that we have over there, but first we need to take out the shaft from the inside, okay? This is the old seal head. This is the new seal head. Now again, you could try and put it in, uh, but again, this is a quad ring. This is a very sharp edge. You could cut your quad ring real bad. So what they have, is a bullet tool, a different bullet tool. This one's like a seven millimeter, millimeter. I think the other one's an eight millimeter. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a little bit of grease on the tool, and then wide part goes down, all right, in here. Wide part with the thread space is the bottom knot. I'm gonna take this guy and boom, done. He is in. Then we're gonna take our shaft and put him back in. We got the shaft back into the eight, eight millimeter soft jaw. Let's clean the threads. Make sure we are good. Looking good and dry actually. Let's go a little bit deeper in there. All right. Now we're going to take a little bit of Loctite. We're going to put it right at the tip. Not much. There we go, more than enough. Let them sink in. Just breathe on him and he will sink in just like that, right? Could help him too. So there we go. Now we're gonna take this guy, we're gonna sink him in. Right, we can't do it by hand anymore. Grab the wrench. All right, then 11, 11 millimeter crow's foot, 3.4 newton meters. Make sure it's even. Three 
0.42. So we're going to grab our ball first. We're going to take, we're going to put them in. And we're going to grab our spring. Push them up against the ball. Then we're going to grab our screw. And we're just going to screw them in. Don't put them all the way in until he is flush with the body. Right there. He is totally flush. That's all we need to do. There's one more part that we need to change, which is the glide ring. All right, it's the old one. Take a new one, which is always going to be bigger. I don't know why. Never figured that one out. Let it just sit there, close it up, let it sit there, and it'll take shape. Okay? And then what we can do is take our rebound knob and test. There's our clicks. Okay. Before we close it all up and bleed it, first, let's take our cap on top or our dial on top and push it all the way in. All right. Make sure we are all the way in. Just like that. You will see, hear that snap. We want to hear that snap, okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to take this guy and put him in our clamp. Now what we're going to do is take our oil, again, five weight, right? And we're going to put it inside. Don't fill them up to the top. Give them about one to two inches, okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to squeeze on the bladder and try and get as much oil down as possible. Just keep on massaging it. Technically, we don't have to do it here. We could even do it with our hands. I'm gonna lower this a little bit, make my life easier because I can't get a good grip. Okay. So basically all we're doing is this, right? So just keep on doing this until we don't see any bubbles coming up. This is like a pre-bleed. The more we do here, the less we have to do later. And it's easier here than later. Just keep on going, keep on squeezing. Again, we're just squeezing the bladder. Trying to get as much of that oil down past the shims. If you remember all those little holes, we got to fill up every one of them. Eh, well, I'm still getting bubbles. By the time you're done, from here, it's going to go all the way down to here, basically. The oil inside, that is. Oh. That guy's doing pretty good there. I don't see any bubbles coming out. Now we're going to fill it to the top. Actually, put this guy underneath. Let's try him one more time. Before we fill him to the tip top. Yeah, we're good. So now we're going to fill him to the top. Right to the rim, just like that. Which I can't do since it's going to make a bit of a mess. Take your towel, Put this guy in here. Now we are in the fully open position, right? So make sure you turn them completely counterclockwise for fully open. We need a little bit of space. We need to sink in the Teflon ring. But remember, he's bigger than he should be at first, right? So we got to put that in first, try and make sure he fits in, and then pick up the shaft, and then screw this guy down. All right. Just from by hand all the way. We're going to bleed the rest of it later. Okay, he's all the way down. 
Then we're going to take a three quarter inch or 19 millimeter crow's foot, 6.2 newton meters, 90 degree angle. Put them on the flat spots. Oh, real tighter. 6.26. Outstanding. Now to finish up the bleed. So first we need to remove that top cover again. We're going to use our screw. We're going to screw it in there and lift it out. All right. We're going to leave that on the side for now. Then we're going to take our mix miser syringe. Okay. And we're going to cover the whole dial just like that. Do you guys see that good? Hopefully you can. It's going to be a little bit blurry, I'm sure, so my apologies. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put some oil in that syringe. You don't have to fill it up. All right. So first we're going to start by squeezing the bladder again. See all the air bubbles coming out? Hopefully you guys can see that. And the whole idea is to keep squeezing the bladder at first to try and get as many bubbles out. And I mean squeeze it. Try and get flat and hard squeezes across the whole thing. Take your time over here. Massage it all and squeeze and squeeze until you don't see any bubbles. Doesn't mean we're done right away. Okay. The other end, all sorts of bubbles will come out. Okay, what you can do to help with the squeezing is grab a rag so you can get more coverage in little areas. Okay, I'm not seeing any bubbles now. So, next, what we're going to do is we're going to start cycling. See, now I'm bringing it up. All sorts of bubbles are coming out. All right, so we're squeezing. Keep, get rid of every single bubble in there. Now we're going to slowly bring it down to suck in all fluid and replace the air that we just took out. Okay, more bubbles coming out as I cycle. Again, I'm just picking up the shaft slowly. Squeeze. And then we're gonna bring it down slowly. Squeeze again. Okay, bring it up slowly. More bubbles are coming out. Now we can bring it down again. Bring it up slowly, bring it down. You could hear bubbles going through. Hear those sounds? Those are little air pockets. A good sign that you're really close to done is when you don't hear any of those. Just take your time, there's no rush here. The more time you invest here, the better off you will be on the trails. Oh, there go a couple of bubbles right there. More bubbles. Up and down. So basically, you're just gonna keep on doing this for a while until you cycle up and down a good 10 times if not 20 times, and you don't see anything as you're squeezing, okay? So bring it up, squeeze. And always squeeze in different positions, right? And then bring it down, squeeze. Okay. I'm going to keep on doing this 
Although right now I'm looking pretty good to be honest, but I'm going to keep on doing this for a bit. I don't have to record the whole thing. You guys get the gist of it and I will be back. I've been at it for literally less than two minutes. We're doing great. I don't have any air coming out no matter what I do. It's sounding super quiet. This thing's great. Okay, so next to finish this up, bring the re rebound rod all the way down to the end. All right, all the way down to the end. And then give it one last squeeze again, OCD. Yeah, there's nothing coming out of this thing. So now we're going to take off the syringe. Be careful not to make too much of a mess. All right. Oh, I like that. Damn, I just wasted all that. Oh, well, that sucks. I hate it when that happens. My bad. Anyway, make sure you have oil filled up to the top over here, okay? So now what we're going to do is we are going to take our ball, put it back into the shaft over here all the way in we're going to take our spring and put that guy all the way in actually my bad i'm doing it wrong my bad it's the wrong one oh let's get him out again there we go first we're putting our spring in this one and you know what put a little bit of grease on him just a little bit of grease Help with corrosion. Regular grease, not fork grease or shock grease. Okay. So first we put the spring. Then we're going to put the ball. This ball's already somewhat corroded. <clears throat> okay. Getting tired, man. It's like 3.30 in the morning or something. Okay. And then we're going to put it on. Just make sure the ball doesn't pop out, right? So we're going to put it all in. Press on the ball. Get a little bit stiff. Ball go in. Yep. Now we're going to twist it until he sinks in all the way down. See all the way down. Yep. He is in. Good. Well, I cleaned up the mess and I also took out the remaining oil that was sitting in here, right? So just grab like a pick, take paper towel, go in there and just clean it all up best you can. So that is done. Now, we got new dials and we could test this. If I could open up this bag. Oh, apparently monkey can't figure it out. I don't know. Oh, for, dude, it's just a bag, man. Look at this. Fourth. Of all things. Oh, I don't care anymore. Okay, so let's take off our screw. All right. Let's test our high speed compression. One, two. One, two. Yay! Now we can go in there and test our low speed. Before it wasn't working, and now it's clicking beautifully. Look at that. Excellent. All right, let's put everything in the fully open. Okay. Well, before we screw everything down, let's take off the caps. We are working. Now we have the clip. They gave us a new one. Let's use a new one, but don't throw this one out. I would keep it for emergency purposes. You never know. Be careful putting this thing in because he could spring out and make sure you're wearing glasses because he could spring out right into your eyeballs. It's amazing how much force this guy has. I wish the one at the bottom had the same amount of force. Should have came up with a different solution down there. Okay. Oop. Thought I had him. Let's grab this guy here. A little thinner. This guy's a little bit tricky to get in, but he'll go in. Try and sink like one side. And then... Or you could try and sink like the back side. Nope.
There we go. Come on. Now you should be able to go in. Come on, get in there. Let's motivate them a little bit more. I don't know. Four to love. Look at this. Just get in there, man. Why are you giving me a hard time? There we go. All right. Now he's in. Perfect. Before we put him back into the tube, we could test him out. Perfectly silent. No noises, no nothing, right? Now, let's take our block out, block him out. Nothing, not a millimeter, not one millimeter. Awesome. Pedal mode. Definitely easier than, I mean, a little bit harder, I should say. I'm not going to be able to tell low speed compression, but let's test re rebound. Uh, and fully open, let's put them to fully closed. Should go up easy. Oh yeah, that's a lot harder. So we are working. We are working just fine. All right, we're in the fully open position. Fully open position. Make sure we're fully open position on this guy. Let's take this guy out. All right, clean the inside tube. Let's extend him out fully. Let's put this guy in, always by hand, by hand first. Okay, we can't do it anymore. Okay. All right, and then just like before, torque wrench. 24 newton meters, technically 24.8, but if it doesn't make it to 24.8, I won't tell if you won't tell. <whistles> 24 on the nose. Outstanding. Now we can put our knobs in. So, depending on how you want them to face, you want it fully open, fully closed like that? Sure, why not? And then we have our compression. Low speed compression. He is all the way off. And put in our screw. Actually, let's try and line him up. See if I can remove him like this. Two and a half. Okay. Let's try him again. Let's see if we could do it like that. Perfect. I like that better. Even better. Hold on. Let me think about this. Since I'm picky. Yeah. Let's do a flat down when he is turned off. Numbers are phasing straight down. Or fully open, I should say. Uh, screw him in. Don't make him too tight. Just finger tight. We want to be able to turn the knobs. Uh, right around there. Do they turn? Did I go too tight? No, oh, he's good. Yeah, he's a little bit stiff because he's new. Perfect. Awesome. Our damper is done. 50 hour service. Now, we've had these rings soaking in there for quite a while. All right, and we're going to take them and we're going to put them inside their tube. Z or the tube. Z. All right, take this guy here, put him on the inside of this guy. And this stuff is so sticky. Okay, actually, it works out good. Now take some of that grease, coat the outside of both. I mean oil, not grease. Okay. Now, get the rest off your fingers. 
All right. And what you can do is take this oil that's in here and just coat the 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 boot. Now we're going to take this guy. We're going to put him in. So we inserted just to make sure you guys get the right way. Uh, I'll show you on the other one. So basically, mm -hmm. we're going to insert them. Got to do them by hand. Ah, uh, I did not want that to happen. Ooh, he's pretty close. I'm going to need a hammer. We want him to be flat. That is perfectly flat. Let's put this guy in here again. Make sure he is sitting flat. Now, take the beveled part, put it up into your tool. So you're going to need a wiper installation tool, right? Now we're going to take this guy in. And, okay. We don't want to put them too deep. Excellent. Excellent. They're both equally in. Outstanding. Have I ever mentioned that making these videos could be maddening sometimes? I had completed this entire job. And then when I looked at the footage in post, I noticed that from this point on, my microphone ran out of battery and didn't record any sound. So I have to do this all over again. All right. So we had installed the wipers. We have our sag ring on the side. Just leave it here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take out our metal rings. Okay. Now we're going to take a little bit of grease. I know Fox doesn't call for this, but I do it anyway. So I'm going to take a little bit of grease, ram butter. I'm going to put it inside the wipers. And the reason I'm going to do this is because this isn't mine. I have no idea how often it's going to get serviced. And I'd rather have a bit of extra protection than not. And I highly doubt that this is going to be a problem in any single which way or form. Okay, so let's put some butter inside the concave part of the wiper. Now let's clean out any excess grease from the back on both sides because that's going to be really hard to access later. All right. Now, what we are going to do, we're going to take our sag ring on the air side, put this on first. There we go. Then we're going to take our metal rings. The reason I put these on like this is I don't want to take the chance of pinching them when we go to insert the lowers with the uppers, right? So serial number facing you, arch on the arch facing the down, right? So now what we are going to do is let this guy in, try and get one side in first, and then just slowly wiggle in the other side. There we go. Bring them all the way down. Let's make sure that we can see both sides sticking up. Yep, I don't know if you can see that, but both shafts inside are sticking outside. Just leave it like that for now. Before we put the oil in, we gotta clean our nuts. So. I had already cleaned them. I'm just going to go through the motions just so you guys could see it in order to be able to do it so you don't forget it, right? Clean inside, outside. You want to make sure you have the best contact possible on the flat part of this washer with the crush, uh, this nut with the crush washers, right? So make sure you clean the inside over here real well, plus the threads on the inside. Clean the whole thing, but again, we want to make sure we have really good contact here. So. And these are new washers since I had to take the old ones out. Crush washers are cheap. Shocks going bad because of oil leaks is expensive. So again, now we got our crush washers ready. So if you look at this chart right there, you see how much oil we need to put in here. Now this is a hundred millimeter fork. So on the air side, I need 10, 10 cc's or 10 milliliters of oil. On the damper side, they're all 15 milliliters or cc's of oil, all right? Now, here's the tricky part. This is a step cast, so it's very deep and offset, right? Especially on the air side, the, the actual axle point where, or the hole where you, we put in the oil. 
Well, a typical syringe isn't going to work. Usually you would need a syringe with, let's say, I think a 3 8 hose, right, in order to be able to plug in. Or you could use a really small syringe where you could fit in the hole and then we just inject it. The only problem is this is five milliliters at a time, so I'm going to have to do it in parts and, you know, small bits. So the first thing we're going to do is create some separation, right? Don't take the whole thing completely out. Just enough where we know. There we go. So... I have enough space about that space between the wall and the shaft on the inside, right? So now let's start with the damper side. So for the damper side, I'm going to need 15 milliliters. So I'm going to fill this guy up three times to five milliliters, right? So now what I'm going to do is put them in, make sure the tip is in the hole. It doesn't move sideways. Am I in the hole? I can't tell if I'm in the hole. Yes, I am in the hole, right? And I'm just going to force down. So that's five. Okay. Do that again. There we go. That's 10. And... This is 15. Now for the air side, we need 10. All right. The air side is going to be a little bit harder. There we go. I got it in there one shot. That's nice. So it's five and one more to go. Sweet. And 10. Perfect. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we are going to clean the base to make sure there's no oil that the crush washer is going to sit on, right? We want a nice dry that's oil dirt from the sides. We just want to dry out the base of all oil okay and do this side Oop. that oil is probably from when I opened it up and it feeds it out again okay or it could have been from a little bit from when I just poured in but I'm not too worried about it because I had a little bit from before anyway. All right. Pretty good. Let's do that side one more time. All right. Pan the butt with step cast because it's so deep. Now we're good. So next what we're going to do is close it back up. Yep. Make sure both shafts are fully sticking out. Now we're going to grab one of our nuts. Put the crush washer in it right and for the step cast both nuts are the same again now what we're going to do is screw it in start it with the air side for now this could be tricky because it's deep okay screw it down until you can't screw it down anymore with your hands that takes care of that one now let's do the damper side Okay. The damper side, this could be a little bit tricky. All right, there we go. I should do it. Should. Yep, we're good. Okay, grab our wrench. I mean, our ratchet. Don't torque it down yet. All right, now, oh great. Now, we need to torque them down. Fox says 5.7. Eh, you do 5.7, I'm doing 6.0. I feel a little bit more comfortable with these things when they're just a little bit more than 5.7. All right, so.
6.1 and ah, stuck in there great socket got stuck inside come on there we go Let's see if we can get them out like this there we go well, put them in this way make my life easier probably now let's find this nut and just like the other one Yeah. Oop, we are nearly there. There we go. Six point oh on the nose. All right, that part's done. Let's put our springs back onto the wipers. All right, grab a plastic or blunt pick. Mm. Come on, wait. Ah, oh, air brake. Look at this. <laughs> For the love of. Oh, come on. Oh my God, I'm not stupid. Okay. That's one. Always something, I swear. And that is two. Then our rebound knob. We want to make sure it's clean. Right? And make sure the base is clean. I already cleaned this yesterday. I'm just going through the motions again. Basically, you want to make sure it's clean down there too, right? Where the screw sits on top. Then we're going to take this guy and install him all the way down two millimeter on the long driver. Now this part could be tricky. Only because it's deep and hard to see. If you look at the openings, you can see down to the base. Oop, don't do that. All right. Okay, that's it. I got him. I... Yeah, how'd that happen? Screw him down. There we go. Don't over tighten them. Just tighten up to make sure that there we go. Our rebound is working. Next, spray them all down with alcohol. And get up any excess oil and grease from the outside that we can from everywhere. So nothing sticks to it on our first ride, or at least limited amount sticks to it. Make sure we get the inside over here. And ta-da! And there you have it, folks. You just finished fully servicing a Fox Float 34 step cast with a Fit 4 damper. Not a hard job. The reality is, guys, uh, 50 hours on the bottom. Stay on top of your 50-hour service. It's just so important, in my opinion, and it, it's the greatest return for both shocks and forks uh, when it comes to servicing an entire bike, all right? Air springs, simple enough. The reality is you don't have to change the seals every time. I mean, if you do the 50-hour, you could even go in there and, you know, just clean that up a bit. As far as the damper, the damper, you have two options, in my opinion. If you regularly maintain your fork, you do, in my opinion at least, you do not have to change out the bladder and you do not have to open up the compression stack outside of taking the top cap off or the top uh, the, the adjuster uh, in order to be able to bleed the system. That you're going to have to do to bleed the system anyway, right? But the rest of it, you don't have to touch. And the rebound, as you saw, is simple enough. 
you could turn this damper job into literally like a 20 minute, maybe 25 half hour max job with the bleed, all right? So you could really simplify it. Now, in this case, there was a lot of corrosion on it because I had no idea the history of this shock. I just know that it wasn't working. And I mean, this fork and I had to take it all apart, right? So you don't have to do that in my opinion. Now, the only thing that's left is you're gonna put your settings back to where they were before. Let's not forget our air cap. I'm gonna fill it all up with, I'm gonna fill it up later. And on your first few rides, make sure that you clean your stanchions because some excess grease and oil will wanna come out and we don't want too much dirt accumulating on it, making the wiper's job harder than it needs to be, all right? So, if you like the video, please, guys, click the like button. Click the subscribe button to see more videos. Click the bell button, bing, 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 in order to get notified when new videos get released and more videos are coming. And until then, I hope all is well with all of you, and we will be talking to you soon. All right, take care. Have a good one. Bye.